be asked to come forward with their project. State your name for the record and present your request. I might add that please speak directly into the microphone. Anyone wishing to speak to the proposal will be asked to come forward and voice their opinions. If there are opposing viewpoints, each side will have 10 minutes to speak. Once your request is heard and the board's decision is rendered, you may leave the meeting. However, if you have questions for staff, please wait until the meeting is over to ask them, or you may contact staff the following day. Once public testimony and discussion for a particular item has concluded, the members of the board deliberate and render their decision. Members with a personal financial or, or financial interest in any request are required to recuse themselves from voting. All decisions by the Architecture Review Board are final. Any aggrieved parties may appeal a decision of the board to the City Council within 15 days for procedural issues only. If your request is denied by the board, petitioners may also appeal the board's decision to the circuit court within 30 days of the meeting. We have six members present. It takes five votes to pass a motion. If because of the number of members present, or I would say absent, you would like to delay your request, please just let us know at the time your request is announced. Our board members are Elizabeth Brown, Jake Johnson, Jeremy Kelly, John Hayden, Hillary Morgan, and I can't see everybody. Is anybody else? Oh, Katie, I'm sorry. And Katie Williams. Our land use staff are Christy Anderson, Tanya Ingram, and Ethan Fowler. All right, our first um, item on the agenda is Natalie McKenzie at 307 Felder Avenue. Hi, state hey. my name, Greg Parker at 307 Felder Avenue. Okay. Uh, we just came to see if y'all had a report on whether or not we can paint our house. Uh, Christy and I made a site visit, and I'll just report briefly on that. Um, this is a house built, I would say, in the 20s, though, I don't know for sure, with a heavily rusticated brick. It's been repointed um, at least partially once, and most of it w one time, and, and it's been patched here and there ever since. Um, the, there is some uh, errant paint from where the porch was uh, once, uh, where the screen and porch was once attached to the house. And there is caulk and things that the cable men and the phone men have done that, uh, I, I agree, create an unsightly thing and just everything needs to be cleaned up and updated. The back wall of the house has some serious problems. Uh, one side of the, the right hand side as you stand at the back and look at the house has an area that has a bulge in it which indicates to me that the brick ties that hold the veneer to the structure have probably rusted through and that's going to need to be taken down and the ties replaced and the wall laid back up. There's also a big hole where the air conditioner vent goes under the house that's uh, <coughs> I think any one of us could have done a better job than was done in, in holding the brick up and making an opening for that air conditioner vent. So that looks messy and is probably structurally insufficient and needs to be improved. Uh, it's a cute house. The deck is nice. Um, sweet little backyard. I don't see a problem on that house that can be, that can be fixed. I don't see that the house can be painted until the problems are, are fixed. If you want the front of the house to look neater with the paint off of it, there are good paint removers that can be used to uh, uh, clean up that. Peel away is one I've used. There are a lot of other ones that can be tried. And um, the, the, the structural problems, the repair of the brick just needs to be undertaken before we really consider painting it. I think the house is, it's a cute house like it is. 
I told somebody uh, that, you know, you have a beautiful horse and you inevitably have some flies. Well, let's look at the horse and not at the flies that are on the horse. And most of these things are small and I think can be made to look a lot better than they do now. But the structural problems that I saw were what concerned me. That's my opinion. So are you going to vote on it, now, if we can paint it or not? Do you have anything? I mean, you can, I, I didn't mean to give your presentation. I just told you what I thought. So if you want to give a presentation or say something about it, that's perfectly fine. It, the, the last time we were here, someone, it might have been Christy, said the, a reason why we couldn't paint it. Do you recall what that was? Like, it can't be painted because... Or it shouldn't be painted because of a, the way it looks or something aesthetically. Do you recall that? Well, I do recall that. I mean, mm. the style of the house is the interplay between the, the trim and the brick. And to paint the house, especially to paint it a white color, virtually the same color as the trim, would not be consistent with the historic character of the house. Now, that's an aesthetic reason why you wouldn't want to do it. The things that I was addressing were the structural reasons. What was the last thing you said? What the, kind of the things that I was addressing and what I just spoke about were the structural things that I saw, not what we said at the last meeting about the aesthetics of it. It, it still is unpainted. It's not a good, and I told you this last week, it's not a good brick to paint because of the highly um, textured kind of brick it is. A smooth brick is easier to paint. It looks better longer and it holds the paint better. Hmm. I think I said, Mr. Parker, until repairs were done to see the condition after the brickwork and whatnot was done, it, it's difficult to say, yes, it needs painting without seeing what repairs, what modifications you made. I do remember saying something to that effect. Mm. You know, it's you got anything to add? Okay, so if we're going to appeal this to the city council, how do we do that? The appeal to city council is solely for procedural reasons. So that we can't do that? You can, but you've got to prove that they've, they've made an error in procedure well, and I not think, following their guidelines. Well, I don't know how to prove that they've made an error. I mean, because it, you know, y'all have your opinion. We, we have ours. It's our home. Just like white, right now and I'm walking out of the house, i got brick falling off. It, it's just... It, it, it's a it's a nightmare, and no one wants to, no one wants to, no one wants to see from our point of view, and even from a real estate side of view, like you're never going to be able to sell that house. It 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 just makes no sense to me to just put a bunch of money into a house that you're never going to get it back out of. So what's the point in fixing it if you can't fix it? And I get maybe white on white, you wouldn't like that, but I can also paint it another color like a gray and then have my white trim but i'm just not gonna i already know how the brick looks where someone tried to fix this house numerous times um and like mr charles told you he's been doing it for 40 years there's no way he can ever match any of that up and make it look right and anytime someone's going to walk up to the front of my house that's all you're going to see is all these little pieces of all this hodgepodge where everybody put stuff together the house looks terrible and it's just sad to me for the house that no one can come together on this decision but I mean but anyway so I don't know how you appeal this to the city council people but that is what I want to do if you want the decision reversed if they deny it you need to appeal to circuit court that that's that's the the entity that could overturn their decision is circuit court City Council has the authority to kick it back to this board again. Okay, well, we're good with letting it fall in. They have not taken a vote yet, and I think what they're trying to express is that please talk to us once you've made the repairs so we can look at how it looks. They're, they're not saying it will never happen. No. They're saying it may be premature for them to make that decision, and probably some fear that it'll just get painted and it won't get fixed. I hadn't really thought of that. It's just, again, I think I expressed last time, I, I can't, 
I can't say how it's going to look once repairs are done. I do know from personal experience, once you get into some of these repairs, they're not as simple as you thought they were. And sometimes they're not as difficult as you thought they were. Um, and it may be, once things are done, that it, painting might be a proper avenue depending on how it looks once the repairs are completed. But uh, <clears throat> can't predict the future and can't base a decision based on what might be or might not be. One of the things that this board looks at also is reversibility of the change. How easy would it be to undo a change that's proposed? Getting paint off of brick is not a very easy task. You can't sandblast it. You've got to you've got to use a chemical stripper that can damage the brick. You know there there are issues for the long-term preservation of the structure that they consider too. Um, in in trying to understand or trying to explain why they even review needing to get permission to paint an unpainted brick surface. Um, there, there, there are other issues um, involved when, when we talk about is, can it be reversed? Could, could the original appearance be restored? And it would be very difficult to do that in this case. Someone had mentioned last time we were here that the reason that you wouldn't want it painted is because a Tudor home traditionally doesn't have painted brick? Right, uh, the Tudor revival style was intended to emulate English architecture of the Tudor and Jacobean periods. And the vast majority of that is, it's still unpainted. It had decorative brickwork. Um, so the detail was in the brickwork. Um, you have a two-tone brick, you've got a, a deeper red foundation brick, a soldier course, and then a body brick. And that decision was intentional to, to create that visual effect on those walls. And that, that's part of what you lose when, when you apply paint, it, you lose some of that detail. Right. D who decided it was a Tudor style house? It, it just, that is just what it is. It, it, that, so that, you're the one that decided that? It's in the National Register nomination that way, I believe. Yeah, I mean, if you look at any style guide of American architecture, it falls squarely in a Tudor revival Well, style. I have those uh, guides right here. So the, the main three points for to make something a Tudor style home, steep roofs, no arches, no cornice overhanging. We're saying that our house is not a Tudor style home, it's a craftsman. Your house is not a craftsman. Could you explain why it's not a craftsman house? It does not have the elements of a craftsman. Um, you've got that decorative uh, plaster work with the half timbering and the gables which is indicative of the Tudor revival style. Um, you've got, you do have decorative brackets on the front porch, but they are not craftsman style brackets, um, which, which are generally triangular or, you know, uh, a triangle with an arc in it. Um, a small craftsman style house too is usually one volume and you've got, you know, you've got a gable, you've got uh, an intervening cross gable, you've got your, uh, the, my mind fails me, the rollout windows, they have a name. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Casement windows. It, it does have some elements of a craftsman house, but it's not, um, it's not arranged in the way that a craftsman house would be arranged. And most of the craftsman houses in Montgomery are sided. They're not, they're, they're not brick. There are a few. There are a few, but most of them are not. So what if it were a craftsman house? Were those traditionally painted brick? No, they weren't. If you, if you had brick, it was brick. Yeah, because you wanted to show off your brick because you could afford to put brick on your house. Um, I mean, having that brick veneer was a really big deal um, in differentiating the status of your house from your neighbor's houses. Well, what type of houses traditionally had painted brick? Um, you start to see that in, I would say, the Colonial Revival, um, where you see these kind of neoclassical designs, so you're incorporating elements of, of those earlier Greek 
revival elements and these colonial elements where we have you know a two story well that i mean that that's getting into you know that classical style where where painting the brick was in vogue that that was what they did in the you know 30s and 40s um and even into the 50s with with some of that um colonial revival architecture so that's really where you start seeing that the aesthetic choice to paint the brick which, which you didn't really see before I would say uh, Winter Place may be the exception, but I don't know when that was painted. I don't either. But that, but that's um, both of those houses were antebellum, so they've been around for 170 years. All right. Well, some houses can have painted brick with no problems, and we just want to paint ours. Well, some houses that were painted were painted before this district was put in place. And like I said, it's a very difficult condition to reverse. And it's not our job to go back and tell people they've got to undo things that have been done. Um, but we do have control over things that happen moving forward. Okay. It, it, and it sounds like the repairs are more important than pain at this time. Pain is not structural. Pain is just, it's, it's makeup. So, you know, what you really should be more concerned about is perhaps getting the, the, the structure repaired to its point and then you can call us back and say, hey, this is what had to be done. We need a little makeup. Yeah, well, I just want to get it all settled at once so yeah, y'all can do the repairs and you can paint it. So it's, you know, it might be a two-step process. We do have a garden district rep here as well. Oh, I'm sorry, Laura, I didn't see you. Uh, we are still pretty much where we were last time that we feel like the repairs need to be made before any kind of determination can be made as to whether or not the house needs to be painted. Thank you. Further discussion from the board? John Hayden, are you ready to take on a motion? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. I move this time that we deny the petitioner's request based on the fact that it is, in my opinion, premature because repairs have not been made. The structure as it currently stands, uh, based on photographs in your report, I uh, don't believe the brick is in such condition that painting is a necessity to, uh, or that painting is necessary at this time. Uh, and again, my main concern and my main reason is that to get permission right now would just be premature. Again, once the repairs are done, certainly revisit it. Might be that it that it would we think it would be necessary, but at this time I move to deny the motion. No, I request. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you for coming back. I know this hasn't been pleasant for a lot of you. Uh, Rakshana Yasmeen, 419 uh, South Perry Street. You skipped one. Number two. It's, um, I'm sorry. Brandon Christian. Cherry for Christian I'm Calhoun. Sorry. Christian Calhoun. Christian Calhoun. Christine Calhoun, 2060 South Perry Street. Erroneously, it says Hall on your uh, agenda. No, this one's correct. I, I messed up 1616 South Perry Street, which is later uh, typed in South Hall. All right, so, I give up. This is 2060 <laughs> South Hall Street. <laughs> All right, we have Christian Calhoun and Christina Caden. Yes. All right, no wonder I was confused. Yes. It's not a long trip. All right, Christian Calhoun, what do you want to do at 2060 South um, Perry I'm, Street? I'm Brandon Cherry. I'm standing in for the Calhouns. They live in Fairhope. This is just another home that they have. All up right. Um, Y'all don't have photos? Oh, you do have photos. Okay. Uh -huh. I thought, I thought they were I good. said, I took photos, but I, he sent oh. me a report that was supposed to have photos in it, and they were all just black boxes. Do you have, is that the only photo y'all have? 
Yeah, I didn't have access to I, the property. I like that. I've got a picture of the back if y'all would like to. Does it look like the front? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, the house has a, a aluminum stamp roof, as you can tell, and the insurance company didn't pay to replace the aluminum stamp room at the replacement cost value for the house. Um, and they're wanting to put a, a 30 year architectural shingle on the roof. It's pretty much every shingle that's on the street. There's a couple three tab roofs on the street actually, um, which I didn't think you could get away with, but uh, they're gonna go, well, excuse me. Uh, if y'all allow them, they're just gonna go back with a 30 year architectural roof. It'll actually look just like that. It's the same color. Um, same style even because of how the shingles are the the metal is on the roof now um, and then they're going to do some additional fixing the flat roofs and stuff like that uh, out of their own pocket because the carport's falling in and the skylights are um, leaking. leaking everywhere <laughs> the decking's rotted uh, the back side of the house pretty much all the soffits are falling off of the house um, from you know, just years of leaking. Um, and they've got a few leaks in the house around the chimneys and stuff because again, it's an old roof. Um, so they're just wanting, like I said, to do a 30 year architectural uh, shingle. And this is not a, the historic roof and we don't know what the historic roof was. Is that not correct? There, there's no indication of what, um, the photos in the file when a stop work order was issued when this roof was being installed in 1994, um, just shows uh, felt on the roof. Okay. So in 1994, someone said stop putting that roof on and someone went ahead and put this roof on? Um, they got approval. I, it was approved um, after the fact. Okay. Was this, this was Mr. Pearson's house, like Pearson, Humphreys, and Jones? It was the architect's house, I remember. Hmm. I, I have no, I can't speak to that. All right, any discussion from the board? I move we approve is submitted. Um, do you want comments? Does Laura have a comment? Laura, I'm sorry, Laura has no comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I need a second. Second. All in favor. Fix your roof. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Flash your chimneys. <laughs> Thank y'all. Thank Certainly. you. Thank you, Christy. All right. Number three. Rakshana Yasmeen. Mike, would you bring up the site plan? I printed out a site plan that um, was sent to me, but yes, but it doesn't, it didn't print out completely. I, I tried it at several different sizes and it cuts off the entire driveway part of it. So I was thinking, where's the I, rest of the driveway? I happen to have the updated site plan. Well, I that's, think. that's what he sent me today. Okay. That's there, what, so they, they should be able to pull that up on their monitor now since it's up there. Um, but what I printed out cut off everything between the street and the, the circle. So and let, do you have copies? Would you like to copy see this to see? It's a note from me. Sure. I got to Gloria. Okay, great. Thank you very much.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rick Sigrist. I'm with RHS Creative Home and Design Landscape. I'm a professional uh, design consultant. I was brought on the team by uh, Mr. Yassim regarding Knox Hall. Um, Mr. Yassim has proposed a driveway uh, that would accommodate the venue that um, he is trying to finish up so that this historic landmark can once again be uh, a, a beautiful setting in our city. I um, have two things, if you'll indulge me. Indulge me. Um, one is the two trees that I believe at some point in time had been mentioned that they should be cut down and other trees planted in their place. I would like to uh, respect some respectively disagree because of the fact that the trees are very healthy, they're very historical old oaks that could use pruning and shaping in order to maintain the integrity of the property itself. They stand alone and they pretty much frame the house from the street. So when you're standing on the street and you look forward, those two trees are in the foreground which are Again, beautiful old oaks that are completely healthy. Taking those down would be detrimental to the look of the property and to me, the historical value of it. I think the, quest the comment was merely that the trees are a renewable resource. The house is not a renewable resource. No one has any problem with keeping the trees. So the trees are not up for any issue. They're, they're, it's fine to leave the trees? It's we... fine to leave the trees. Great. Good. But if you wanted to develop a new landscape plan with trees, mm -hmm. you could do that too. Yes. Right. While and... we're on the trees, did Mr. Stringer make any comments about putting this driveway in, how it might affect the trees? Um, this yeah. just came in, so he's not seen it. Okay. It's slightly narrower than um, the previous submission, which I think was 18 feet. Um, so I'm sure that uh, there, hey, Ethan, do you, I mean, it's. Yeah, how, how about how far away from the, the trunk of the tree will the new the proposed driveway be on each side, would you say? Yes. I mean, if you look at the, at, at the that's not, that's with a new proposal. It's the same circular driveway, but it was mentioned that the hardscape of the driveway was an impediment to the property also. So my, through my research, in that time period, in that era when that house was made, it would have been very much more in, in this order of a driveway design because that would have been carriages coming up to the house, dropping people off, and then it, at some point, then cars. It's not made to be a, a parking area. It's made to be a drop-off point. And, and doing that with a venue is very important because you do want people to be able to come right up to the house, be dropped off, say it's a wedding, the couple, or if it's someone that's um, disabled, they will, be able not, they will be able to get off right at the house versus at the street um, which had been proposed at one part point where the driveway would be more like an arc. Now the driveway would go up, it would circle around, and then come right back down. And it would be wide enough at this point to accommodate that without any problems. And I believe also there, um, in, the, in, in the design, there is a uh, fountain in the middle of it that will also give great visual impact for this property. Um, this is a historical house. This is a historical piece of property. Anything that is being done now will be looked at that way. I am very, very much um, involved with uh, helping with the choosing of the plantings for that house for that property because it will be an event venue. So it needs to fall in line with uh, indigenous plants for our area. 
and I think everyone would agree that's the smart way to go <laughs> um, because too many people try to put uh, plantings that are not um, relevant to the uh, structure or to the to the property of the house. Um, I did I did submit this somewhat elementary presentation, if you will, that gave um, what what would be necessary as far as uh, again pruning and shaping the trees, um, giving it curb appeal. My thought would be to add dwarf English boxwoods around the driveway so that that will soften. What will happen, those, those dwarf English boxwoods planted closely together will grow together and then you're able to maintain them. But they're pretty much self-maintaining anyway. They, they, they do not get large, so it doesn't require a lot of um, work to, to maintain those. So if you put those English boxwoods, the dwarf ones, around the driveway, that's going to really soften that look of the concrete there. Now, also within that scope, with having the uh, fountain, there could be flower beds for seasonal uh, planting. That, again, would be, you know, in line with that era because people during that time, it was the typical roses, magnolias, jasmine, um, all of the what we call southern flowers or flowering trees and bushes at that point. So you, you have plenty of space there to create these, this effect of softening the driveway by using plantings both around the driveway and around the property that will bring your eye forward to the house. And I think that's what is the most important thing right now is to think about how from the road that the, the venue will look. The house needs to maintain its historical and, and, and um, grand style, if you will, like many mansions and, and older homes in Montgomery and, and in the area. So I think with uh, Mr. Yassim's um, new proposed driveway site, that can be done. And I, and I think it would be very um, important that, you know, we ask you to, to allow this because of the fact that, you know, he has a team of people now who will be able to help communicate and create what you're looking for, I believe, in this property. There is parking in the back, so there is no need for parking in the front. Again, the driveway is a drop-off driveway. It is not to be parked for parking. Do you have any questions as far as um, plants or how we, can, how we can work on this to create and maintain these trees? We definitely want to leave the trees. Um, and now with the driveway um, being a more landscaped and and brought in line with the period of the house. And it, Ethan, it appears from the previous site plan that with the narrowing of this driveway, it would be about 15 feet from the edge of the driveway to the trunk of the trees. Ba based how on much the, wider would he, that? He'd asked, he'd asked how far away it was, and that's just my fuzzy math. How much, how much wider is that than this walkway that's there now? So I can kind of get an idea. Is that maybe I think we determined feet? that was about, what, five and a half feet? Elizabeth counted off bricks last time. No, it's more than that. Was it? I was thinking eight. Eight yeah. feet? Yeah, I think it was eight feet. Um, it, it's hard to say, but in, in projects like this that I've seen before, Whenever you're going to disturb any of the ground and do any kind of construction around um, trees like this, what you're typically going to see is the drip line of a tree. So imagine this diagram here. If you drew a circle around the, the canopy of the tree, and then imagine the roots growing two to three times the size of that drip line in all directions. Now it's going to run into concrete in the street. So where has it been growing for 30, 40 years? It's been growing into the yard. 
and so this green area that you see here where they're proposing to do their work is the area that's going to be disturbed and so you would do damage to these trees and I would say based on what I've seen from construction around the city um, from other you know, studies that I've read uh, that it would eventually kill these trees. Now I do very very much agree with you that if you could shape these trees up you could beautify them with proper pruning techniques um, I would recommend if that's the approach that the board um, would like you to use that you hire a certified arborist Absolutely. in the city they would know the right ways to do this that can save those trees correct um, so that's I would suggest that if that's the route that you choose to go to trim the trees mm -hmm. and I would also say that it is mine and our office's professional opinion that it would do damage to these trees um, doing any kind of um, construction work um, and it would damage the root zone so yes. when due to the distance from the trunk of the tree to where you're talking about the roots growing the, uh, farther out is that distance not great enough that even if it's disturbed that it's basically not going to damage the tree it's just going to damage those roots that have shot out through the years but the the actual nutrition that those trees are getting is not necessarily from that area right there i mean if you if you look at between the tree trees and the driveway that's not that's really not where the it's, nutritional i call it value or um water line would get to the tree from what i can tell based on these pictures i haven't been on site i believe russell has um, so i can't speak to what he's seen but from what what i can see here and from where the driveway is proposed there's a limited root zone within this yard so you're not the tree's not been able to grow out toward the street because of the concrete that it's limiting factors there and so the green area inside of this yard is where those tree roots have been growing um, and so if you think about tree roots they typically grow in the about only two feet deep into the soil mm -hmm. uh, and so like i said two to three times is typically the standard for the length of the root zone of the tree so based on the limitations that are around this tree i do believe that the area where this is proposed is where those roots are now you could get a root excavation done and you could do a study to see exactly where right. if that's something that wanted to be done and you wanted to get that serious mm -hmm. there are um there are uh it's called a um an air spade is the, the type of machine and uh that can do that uh, but it will destroy that that ground and so it, that is something that you could do and then we could really know exactly what kind of impact you're going to have mm -hmm. uh, but to say that the roots that are growing in that zone aren't going to be beneficial to that tree i think is is incorrect so. we have plenty of people in montgomery okay. who are um, interested in saving their trees and i can think of several just right off the top of my head that we've seen over the course of 10 years who worked very hard to save their tree and they're coming at the end of 10 years to say all right i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to take it down so if you want to if you want to work with these trees for mm -hmm. 10 years in order to keep them there we're fine with that right but i'm saying that this mu this much what what the pe the staff are saying is this mm -hmm. much um disturb of the root structure is in the long term going to cause the death right. of these trees Mr. Asim was just reminding me, though, there is a walkway there already. Right. And it has not been disturbed by the root system that is presently there. So if the Cars aren't driving over it either. No, no, and that's understandable. <laughs> but again, it's, there is a walkway that's already there. Um, so I don't know if at some point in time that study was made in order are for you, that walk. Are you, are you saying the roots aren't? Um, causing like upheaval of the no. okay well that's I don't think that that is necessarily the issue it's going to be removing that and putting this in the construction activities are going to compact the soils which is the most detrimental practice that you can do on top of um, of tree roots um, and so I don't think that that walkway in general being there is necessarily um, an issue uh, I just think that um, 
any kind of activities to disturb the earth is what would impact these trees. So in your opinion, what would be the life of the trees if indeed they move forward? It would, if you were to go ahead and do the project, mm -hmm. um, it's hard to say um, depending on what kind of damage is done. And I would say anywhere from they could die next year or they could die in 10 years, like she was saying. Right, right. But I, I will say that, that it's going to be detrimental to them for the long-term effects or the long, long life of those trees. So it's just hard to be able to say, oh, it's going to either die now or it's going to die um, when. But I can tell you that those have scientifically been proven, those activities to affect those trees like that. Yeah. So, okay, so at, at present, there's brick on the top and there's cement underneath. Okay. And so what would need to be done when that's taken out, you're saying that there could be a study done on it to see how viable that area is? Is that what you, you, you know, to extend the life of the trees, let's say 10 years. You know, um, if we have a 10-year plan right. on yeah. that, what, then what I, we could turn around and address in 10 years, if they die, what, you know, needs to be done at that point. But I don't, I, I, I'm not sure that if with, with that amount of space that it's going to really impact it within a short period of time. I think it would, if, it, if any impact, it would be over a long period of time, which would be at least 10 years or more. Okay. Especially with it already being used in, through the years. Right, that's a, that's a good point. I mean, there has been some foot traffic on there, but I think once you start disturbing the earth in, in a more drastic way, then, then it's going to be um, that the time frame of that is going to ramp up. Did you that indicate impact. that there was testing that could be done before you, before you take up the sidewalk, before you do anything, there's some sort of testing that can be done that can determine where the root system of these trees is, is gone? There is. Um, you, can, you can hire a company of certified arborists. Um, I'm not sure anyone right off the top of my head here in Montgomery that can do it, but they can use an air spade, which is basically like a pressure washer, except it sprays air onto the, onto the surface, and it won't hurt the roots as you pull back that soil, and you can actually see where your roots are growing. And so then you could use that to determine what kind of impact your construction activities would have in that specific location. And I think um, that was my point. We, of course, don't know what direction these roots are growing. They may, it may be that this proposed driveway in 10 years could cause damage, or it may be that these roots are growing in such a way that you could put the 12, 13 foot driveway and if they're in a certain location, it, it might be that no one thinks there'll be any significant damage within the next decade. Right. Um, my, you know, in my opinion, I think if, you know, the venue, they're, they're willing to do that, that's taking a, that, that upon themselves to decide, okay, if, if we do indeed uh, kill the trees, they're going to be responsible, obviously, for the removal of the trees. Right. Correct? Yes, so they could move forward and just go with what the plan they have. Right, and I think, I think the reason this is being discussed is the board is looking at um, the livelihood of those trees long term. It's, right. you know, it's the preservation right. of them. And um, I agree. Because they're, in the city ordinance, the trees are protected in historic areas. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's kind of the question I think that we're trying to answer here. Um, so that would be on the board, it would be their decision. Um, I believe it was mentioned that you could re-landscape if you wanted to go ahead and remove them. Um, yeah, you could. That would be a great thing to do. And to do could, what? To go ahead and replant some trees if you wanted to go ahead and remove them. But in my so, opinion, if in if I had to say, I would say leave them and prune them. That's what I would say. You'd if say you, leave them. Leave them and prune them. If that. Yeah, was, that's that's exactly what you know. My my right. design plan was yeah. was to be able to leave those uh, there. They're beautiful, they're large, they're healthy. I agree. Um, there's really, you know, it, it would take to me away the integrity of the house at this point, uh, both visually and spatially when you look at it. Um, planting other trees will take decades now to get to where those two trees are. 
So I think it's very important just to go with the idea of let's prune, let's shape, let's see ha what happens once we do that and then move forward as far as if they want to take that responsibility on uh, the driveway as proposed. Um, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. They could, they could have the, the test done, if you will, on the roots. Um, and that could be really left up to them if they wanted to do that or if they're just willing to risk it. I think that's really their, their option as far as owning the property. I don't think necessarily they're doing anything um, to intentionally damage the trees. What's your thought on that? <laughs> I mean, I think I think what my decision. I don't have any decision making. This. <laughs> it's all on the board. Yeah, yeah. But I think from from the city side of it, what what we would say is that any kind of construction activities within that root root zone will be detrimental to the trees. But I also agree with you that a proper pruning technique on the trees, if that is the decision that is made, mm -hmm. will not do damage to them in the short term, right. and it would also add to the um, value of the property. I agree yes. with that. Yes, so that's where I'm that, going. Those are the two sides that I'm on. Yes, I agree with that. That's being, being that we're coming into the fall season when the tree's going to come dormant, would that help it or hurt it in this juncture? It could, it could help it um, because the tree won't be actively taking up any nutrients from the soil for the next four to five months. Mm -hmm. um, you see that, you know, you, would, you probably wouldn't see the effects of this until next spring. Mm -hmm. um, Right now, we're kind of coming to the end of the growing season. And with perhaps an arborist on, on staff to kind of monitor the trees, they could kind of promote growth of the roots in the spring uh, on the other portions of, of the tree. Say it again. I'm sorry. That, that, you know, basically, if we know we're going to kind of harm uh, this side of the tree, you know. No one has any problem to, with saving the yeah, trees. Yeah. yeah I it's think there's things issue. that an arborist on staff could help you with and when you could do things because of the seasons or maybe help promote the growth of the other root systems. There, there are the techniques spring. that can be used. Um, there's a technique for fertilization that can be used to promote the root growth into the other parts of the yes. yard. Um, it's just, you know, if that's something that they're willing to do, that'd be, that'd be great. That's my understanding from Mr. Yesin and his group is they are willing to um, take that on and I, and I can help them find the right company in the city that can do it it's a very these are specialized techniques that not, not right. just every tree service can do I think um, that would be I they may, they may have to bring in the only person that comes to mind that I know that can do these professionally is someone in Mobile um, and that is a fairly large tree company that okay. we've done business they, they with. do more tree saving in Mobile than we do <laughs> correct <laughs> speaking about um, away from the trees, okay? Because I think everybody on the board would agree because that if we could save a tree, we would prefer to save a tree than not save a tree, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I think my biggest concern is one, looking at the house, and if you compare that to the historic image that you have further in your submittal, okay? Mm -hmm. That had a circular drive, but not the same type of circular drive. It was more of a U-shaped horseshoe style, okay? And the way that you are, this design that's been submitted, okay, my concerns are you are creating an 18-foot entryway at the, at the road, okay? That will narrow down to the minimum distance of 12 feet, okay? Then that extends to approximately a 41-foot width within the circular drive with the fountain in the center. Huh. The total width of the house is 64 feet. Mm -hmm. Okay, that leaves you approximately 10 to 12 feet on either side of the house itself. Mm -hmm. So to me, that is invasive, okay? It's invasive to the property in the front of the house and the historic nature of the house, okay? If it is landscaped properly, properly it would not appear that way. Okay. I think, I think I agree with what you're saying. I understand what you're saying because it does seem like it's going to be wide and it's going to impede on the front of the house. But actually it won't impede on the front of the house because you're going to have um, hardscape there and then again correct planting, landscaping on those sides. 
so it will not look visually as if the driveway is, is as imposing as agreed that it sounds from 41 feet to 60. Okay, so then I also, I hear you with the landscaping, but then my concern is you're then adding a large amount of landscaping with all the boxwoods going around the circular drive, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is gonna impede the look of kind of the front. It's gonna look like a lot of boxwoods that are edging and faced on the front of the house. In there too, you have the middle of the fountain, which I think the fountain is usually, would so sounds like a great idea, but my concern with the fountain is taken away from a focal point directly at the entrance stairs. Then I come to the fact that you have a 12 foot and then a 13 foot difference and a 14 foot difference. Mm -hmm. My question there is, you have a car coming in or a limousine, are they going to be able to enter there, turn around that radius mm -hmm. and exit with another car at the same time coming in? Yes, because they're dropping off. So as, as one car is coming in, and it, it makes that circle around to the front walk, they're, those, the, the people in that car are out get, going up to the walkway. The other car is pulling around. And so you're not parking, you're just pulling around for the other car to come up and then you go down. So okay. it's, just a, it's just a constant motion, if you will. So my, with, qu my question is, you have weddings, right? Yes. How many cars can back up into that loop before it becomes an issue? Because my concern is if you're dropping off, that means you would have one at the front of the loop, okay? You would have to have one on both sides of the loop. Somebody couldn't be coming in the same time somebody's coming out and it could not stack up more than a, say three cars. That is my concern. And if one of them's a limousine, then yeah. I think you would have an even a bigger concern there. That is my concern related mm -hmm. to it. Chrissy, do we, I know you just received this, but based on the other one that we received where it was even wider, I think there was concerns with the city. Am I not correct with the turning radius? There is some concern vehicular? about whether or not the turning radius was sufficient, um, but also that if, if you've got someone pulling out of that circle and someone pulls in off of Perry Street, unless you've got someone there directing traffic, well, it's most likely you would, and in and a, and a venue like that, you would probably have someone that would be doing that, because again, it's only going to be used as a drop-off, and it's the parking's in the back. Right. right. It's not an issue with the parking, though, but even at 18 feet, it wasn't wide enough for two cars to pass if one was coming in and one was going out, and that was one of the concerns raised yeah, last month. Yeah, I understand. Month. I understand. I, I think that the, the whole concept was, though, that, you know, they didn't really want that. They didn't want it to be uh, a traffic jam by doing that. So if in, in, in doing it where you have one, two, or three cars coming up, as you said, one stopping, unloading, pulling around, the other one doing the same, the other one doing the same, they go down the driveway, whoever's directing traffic then could send the next however many up. I don't think that's going to be a, a issue because again, we're not parking. We're just, it's a constant movement. And so you don't need to pass anyone because one car at a time is going to be doing it because it's not intended to be for everyone to be dropped off because of the parking in the back. You just said something that you said, somebody standing at the street directing traffic, okay, bringing people in. Mm -hmm. So if somebody start having to stand there and direct traffic, in my opinion, you are then going to get a line of cars backed up along the street, okay, waiting for that one individual to make sure that that car loops, or goes in, drops off, and maybe two cars goes in and drops off and loops around. So it mm -hmm. becomes a traffic jam on the main street. Versus a loop driveway, okay, say a horseshoe, more that's in line with the historical nature of the house and the historic image that you gave us. But most of those, you. most of those cars are going to be parking in the back, not coming up the well, street. Uh, everybody uses Perry Street. Ma'am? I mean, everybody uses Perry Street, right. not just people around. No, I understand. Here. Right, right. But uh, again, most of these venue, in venues like this is the weekend, so you don't really have the, as much traffic on that street as you would um, as you, during the week. So it would probably be more of a weekend um, event. Um, but I, I understand what you're saying. 
if you, you know. Yeah, the U shaped of the driveway, okay, allows for one way in and one way out. So one, it helps with the fact that you wouldn't need a, somebody directing as much traffic, okay? Mm -hmm. Two, it allows for more cars to back up in that loop, mm -hmm. all right, to get them off of the main street prior to exiting. And it also would not cause an issue with the possibility of someone having an accident going around the loop where they're com and coming in and out at the same time. So that, my concern is the workability of the plan mm -hmm. and how intrusive it is to the front of entrance of the house and the histor historic integrity that's being maintained that y'all are clearly showing with the old image in y'all's proposal. Mm -hmm. I, I share you know, I, I share a similar concern because I can see the cars backing up on um, on Perry. I mean, I, I can I understand that you guys are kind of looking at it almost like a valet at a hotel where, you know, you pull up, right. people get out, exactly. keep going. However, even at a hotel, when you pull in, you got a, you, you got a second, you know, point mm -hmm. where a person can leave. And then the cars kind of stack up in the driveway leading up to where, you know, the drop-off point is where you can't stack cars in this driveway and have people leaving out at the same time. There's not enough space in the driveway for two cars to kind of, you know. So to go pass by each other. Exactly, so the stack up what happened in the middle of the street. Right. I think that's, that's the only concern. Well, I, well, I mean, I, this doesn't really impact the integrity of the house and architecture because there would have had to been a, a circular driveway at some point in time um, during that period. Um, what is your proposal then as a solution that would not, in, not impede having to take down the trees, which, you know, if we go any wider, we've got a greater chance of that. I don't think that's the direction to go. I think that's what they were addressing last month mm -hmm. with the summarized comments in the agenda right. was that they thought that some of these other issues were more important than saving those trees. Not that they were opposed to the trees staying, but to accommodate a plan that would get you better circulation off the street, the trees are in the way. And there's, there's no two ways around that. I just think we're looking at things hypothetically as far as the traffic goes. I don't, I don't think I necessarily agree that you're going to have that many cars <coughs> backing up in that type of venue. I think you're going to have more people parking in the back. And There's not that much parking in the back either. I mean, we, we don't know where the people are going to park or, or how many people, if it's raining, every single one in a nice dress is going to be want to drop be dropped off at that front door you know what do you do um I, one of one of the things this board tries to do is to make sure that the solution you're proposing for a need you have is not creating other problems and i think that's that's been the concern about the width the potential traffic issues um they're less concerned about the trees because these other issues are really bigger issues. Right. So that's a one-way street. Mm -hmm. You're also on, on a downhill, so you've got people coming who, who may not see that there are cars and stopped it, in that lane until too late. And it's a one-way street right now. They have talked for years about changing those streets yeah. back to two ways. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and it's happening a couple of blocks at a time, mm -hmm. and that could change. That would change the whole scope of this project. Yeah. But for the better. Yes. Be easier to get to. Yeah. It, would, it would definitely change. Does anyone in the audience have anything to say, to, any comments on this project? What about further board comments? Mr. Hayden, you've been suspiciously quiet. Uh, I'm trying to take it all in. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if there's, I mean, I certainly understand all the concerns. I don't know if there's enough room to put a circular driveway in this, in front of this house. That seems to be fairly, I mean, I mean, I kind of, I like the plan myself. I'm sorry? I like the plan. Right. I think um, it's a very good plan. I think it's a very usable and doable plan. 
Well, um, I, I know we, we all express concerns about what may happen. If I could predict the future, I'd go to Florida, pick the next six numbers in the mm -hmm. Florida lottery, hit the jackpot, and <laughs> yeah, I would probably not see Never see, see again. you again. You would never <laughs> see me again. Um, I mean, I agree that the, you know, it is certainly a change, but this is not a, it's no longer a house. This, this is a very, very nice property, a historic property. Yes. Um, I think holding the integrity of the property is, is what they're really looking at right now. And well, I think that's why this particular plan I, I, I understand about, you know, it, the driveway is narrow. I understand you're saying this is not intended for a lot of traffic, you're going to drop things off at the front, you're going to drop individuals off at the front. I can certainly understand, though, you're going to have individuals that may not wait their turn, and 12 feet wide, two cars are not going to pass unless no. they're Mini Coopers. And even then, it's going to be tight. My, my, no, you could not pass in my car. Okay. Excuse me. Would um, not work. I, I drive a Mini Cooper. I was <laughs> like, no, that, that, that wouldn't work either. Even if you folded your mirrors in, it wouldn't work. <clears throat> um, I kind of have a concern about the radius of it and the functionality of that radius. It seems very tight. I mean, if I, I had, I've had a circular driveway at my house and, and the, the center of it was about a, a 15 foot circle. Mm -hmm. And then it was 15, 20 feet. And then we had the, the 10 feet. And, and this seems like a Tahoe or pickup truck just won't make that turn. We, no one I, here is a traffic I, I engineer. I commend y'all for doing this. No, we're not. And I think that the site plan needs to be evaluated by someone whose profession it is to say what we need here, because we don't have, it looks tight to me, but this is something, you know, in working, I would have passed off to somebody who knew what they were doing right. to lay that out. Yeah. Not Mr. Yassim was, was just saying that um, with the, when he met with the concrete um, expert, they were able to make that that turn, that radius that you're you're speaking of, without any problem. So, what do you mean, make it? As in, as in, go around the the circle as she was. They were about. able to take the concrete truck around that. Mm -hmm. Didn't you? A pickup truck. What well, about a well, there's, there's, What about a limousine? There's a. Uh, certain dimensions and stuff that are used that that need to be applied that's all i'm saying yeah they're, they're standard dimensions that are used and and this seems really tight I, I can tell you my car might make that six foot radius i have a hyundai my husband's 20 foot long pickup truck will not make that turn so if the center is changed the, the I, i'm just saying i don't think that circle the fountain you don't think is going to make a difference? And uh, they, they won't hit it. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking physically a car going around a circle. Yeah, yeah. But I was a, it, it has a certain dimension, and, and I think this is smaller than that. Well, if that fountain's put in and if it's determined that cars and limousines and whatever cannot make that turn, guess what? That fountain can be taken out in a heartbeat. Well, the fountain doesn't matter because it's in no. the middle. Uh, I mean, it, right here, it says the outer radii, the inner and outer radii, minimum inner radius of 19 feet, 4 inches, and a minimum outer radius of 40 foot, 41 feet for a medium-sized truck. So, you know, they're, they're standard dimensions that trucks, vehicles do. What, what about um, alternate paving methods that would lend it lend themselves to giving a more grassy appearance so that if you needed more width more turning radius you know like um the, those those driving the grids you can drive on that you can plant grass in so from a distance it would look like a lawn yes but you know it, but you might be able to delineate the pattern but use something like that to expand beyond it if it didn't I, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there as something that would that's, that's would keep some green in yes. that front lawn or that front approach, um, but may help accommodate some of the issues yeah. with the tight 
tight terms. That would, that would definitely be one alternative that would be able to be used. And again, I think we're going back to um, Ms. Morgan with the wet. I don't think we're gonna hurt visually the impact at all um, but as far as the front of the house. Um, again, landscape correctly, um, the whole, if you will, um, existing property. And then, again, like you said, visually maintaining the green space. Because, you know, part of it is just that, you know, could be a trick of the eye of, yes. of making it look like something that it's not. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And that can be done. Mrs. Morgan, how, how do you feel about that as far as knowing that a part of our okay a part of our job is to protect the life safety and welfare of the public right. okay and a lot of what this board does it's not a public business per se it's a house or something of that nature but this is a business okay you are going to have the public coming to that space and I my personal thing is I do not feel comfortable at this time approving this plan okay with the concerns related to the public backup of the traffic on the street and the ability to turn around in that space and come in in the exit okay that's my number one concern the second concern is the look of it in the end okay but there is modifications you can do to that until this were to be submitted okay in my opinion with a um the software from civil engineer that states, hey, you can get a limousine because you're talking a wedding venue to come in and be able to make that turn and come out. That is my concern. I took my big pickup truck, uh -huh. drove around uh -huh. within the 12, 14 meter radius, uh -huh. mile, I mean, feet radius, right. made a good turnaround with this guy who is right now mm -hmm. building a driveway at Lake Martin. Right. This is his Correct. everyday's job. I know. And there was no problem circling around. No, there, there would not be a problem. My there. home has... Because the width of your, the width would be almost what now today's limousines another, are not as large another as they were like before. To, and, and the another issue that, that the city is, is posing the traffic jam this is one-way traffic that's the beauty of it right it is we're glad that it's a one-way mm -hmm. because then you have cones there people are pulling their cars over and taking their turns sure. then they are parking after five o'clock all over downtown right. there is a public deck over there that's why i was mentioning that mostly it's going to be weekend events for the venue or evening I mean, events, and, 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 so and, and, it doesn't make... And, 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 I have a civil engineer in my family, mm -hmm. and I, I showed it to him, mm -hmm. and he said, this is very doable. Yeah, There's nothing doable. to it. And the guy who's making this driveway, this is his everyday job. Mm -hmm. he's very, he's very and good. you know him, too. Yes, he's very good, and very, very good. It's very, as you said, the site yeah. 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 He's an excellent landscaper on the top of this. Sorry, you can talk on the microphone. No, it's okay. Thank you. In my opinion, there's not enough information here to make a decision. This is uh, a building intended for a public occupancy. It needs to have uh, drawings that are um, developed and stamped by someone who is a registered engineer for the ground plane and an architect for the work done on the building. That's just, that's required by state law. I still think that this is not an appropriate uh, driveway for this house, which I said last time, and um, I, I, I uh, respect Mr. Yashid's uh, 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 dedication to his original proposal, and I'm not saying it's ugly. I'm just saying that, it, that in my opinion, it's not consistent with the architectural heritage of the house and that a horseshoe-shaped driveway would be better in this situation, although that would affect the trees. Yes. Ha have you talked to the city engineers? Yes. Because this will have to go through the city uh, planning commission and stuff, I would imagine. I mean, what's the fire department going to say? I'm sorry. We, we, talked, we, we did talk to okay. the fire department. All right. um, 
the fire department determined that they if there was a call to this property they would service it from the street so they okay. do not need to access it by the driveway okay. um, when I got this in um, this afternoon my colleague who works with development plans glanced at it and his comment was that radius looks pretty tight okay but he, he did not study it Chris, um, Christy it being a t5 and being that it will be I mean it's going to be used as a wedding venue and so forth. I'm assuming it had to, will have to go through you all for approval. Um, for that use? No, it's it's permitted. It's T permitted. T five is the most wide open ur urban zone that we have, so it allows um, just about anything. So does it have to have a civil engineer? Um, I don't know about that no, from a from a public yeah, because it is a public us. facility. Yeah, that's what we were told before. Um, I was just saying, um, from my understanding, we were told that that would not be necessary. I know I said that I didn't necessarily need that for us, but I didn't know if anyone else would. Okay. Because I, I think we too were talking about the emergency vehicles and. Yeah, and, what and, would... and fi fire confirmed that they would service from the street. Okay. So we didn't, we weren't looking at having to, if you put in a driveway, put in one that was a commercial width, which is like 20 feet, mm -hmm. um, which would, you might as well just pave over the front lawn if, if that's what you're going to yeah, do. Yeah, that would completely yeah. take away yeah. the integrity of the whole property. <clears throat> I but would really recommend engaging a civil engineer because based on looking from the street view, the elevation of the road, there's a pretty good elevation change from the road to the front lawn itself. Mm -hmm. And getting the grade from the street up to that front lawn is going to take some skill and some, some design. Mm -hmm. And I think, just from my opinion, I think a civil engineer would be the best suited to not only get the grading correct, but also get the drainage, the site drainage correct, and also make sure that there's, you're not going to scrape a front bumper just getting off the street onto the front yard. Sure. Well, that, no, that doesn't meet the city's requirements. It, it's a whole lot wider than that, but they'll find that out eventually. So as we stand, we're going to need to have a civil engineer take a look at it correctly. Is that correct? You just, you need a more developed site plan. You need a site plan developed by someone who is qualified by training and experience to do it, which would not be me. Um, and we need more information. I mean, you talked about the kinds of things you want to plant. Uh, by the way, dogwoods in Montgomery, iffy. You've probably got good enough dirt there. Most people don't. Our clay is too heavy for dogwoods. Yeah, I have plenty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, I just, I think that we're not, we don't have enough information to make a decision here, okay. in my opinion. This is a beautiful property. I really commend y'all for working on it and, and making it a viable portion of the community. I think it'd be a great, vibrant property, but it's got to be done correctly or else you're just going to have a lot of people angry and not go. <laughs> we ready for a motion? I think we've gone. Do we know who back. James is that in, in the city that um, he's, he, he's the one who glanced at it today and told me he thought it looked tight. Okay, that's why he. That's why we were saying that he. He said there would not be the need to have a civil, civil engineer, and that's where I think that. Came he from. he may have said that from a development plan standpoint. So that, that that's that's possible. It was this one. It yeah. was this plan. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, because it was submitted to him. Okay. Well, when he glanced at it, when he saw this before he left this afternoon, he told me it looked tight. Okay. So I bet, but you know, the question, you know, talking about that grade change too, you know, there's no accommodation. What, what if you have to put in a retaining wall of some sort to hold back anything? There, there's no provision for that mm -hmm. in this plan. If they have to excavate a lot to get you a good approach, whether or not that's going to be an issue. Yeah. It may not be. I'm just, yeah, because I think we're, I mean, I'm just we're talking about 2,500 square feet. Okay. So I don't know as far as that goes, you know, a retaining wall would even come into play at that point. Okay. But you're just asking for a different plan. 
a different plan, line, a more developed plan, one that we can really see everything that you're doing. Okay. With the all radiuses right. and all that conform to the standards. Yes. I'm sorry, I missed that. Well, the, the, their standard radiuses of, from the street into a drive that the city will say their standard radius of a car turning, there's, there's, there's just a lot of different standards that don't seem to be being applied in this plan. So I, I don't necessarily have a problem with the circle. I think it actually needs to be bigger and more green space. I think that would actually make it look less big. The bigger you go, the bigger concrete you pour on the land, the more you would mess up the building, the structure of the building. I have talked to a gentleman who sleeps and wakes up doing driveways. At this point, he is doing a driveway at Lake Martin, which I, I don't know, have the address for it. I don't know the, who the individual is, but this is some driveway that he showed me a picture of, which most people would not be very happy to do the work for. It is way like this, up at the lake. So if this gentleman came and looked at this driveway and saying that this is nothing for him, I don't know why the city thinks this, this is like a building a Golden Gate Bridge or something. This is just a very mediocre driveway. It's, I can it, see it for it's, pouring it's the a, concrete. I don't see it, a problem here. It's not a bad, it's an easy job to pour. No, the more radius you want, ma'am, the more concrete you're gonna put. But, but if, you don't, if your car can't turn the radius, I turned my F1, F, I mean, F4, uh, Toyota Tundra truck, which is a very heavy duty truck, going on there. This Sunday, I went up there, did the whole thing. And that's how we came with the dimensions. And in fact, we made more room for the dimensions. We narrowed the entrance because we don't want two cars squeezing in there one time. We want that to be a little tight. The 18. If this was a house, I wouldn't see any problem with this. But I have, I have. This is a house. If this were a residence. It is zoned for that. It is not being used as a residence. If this were a residential structure where you had a family living in it, the functionality of this would not be a concern to me. But if you're going to use it commercially and have more traffic, then it is a concern. I still say the horseshoe is a better, is a better deal. Doing the driveway that's in the historic picture is a better idea than this for this site and this house. Which one is that? The, uh, so with the horseshoe, you're meaning taking out the trees? And put more concrete and destroy the beauty of the building? No. Yes, you do, ma'am. All right, we need to stop arguing. We need to stop going over and over the same we, we've road We've been twice, discussing this for an hour. We need to make a vote because I think this has been 30 to 45 minutes. We have other individuals waiting out here Sorry who need to that. present their cases to the board so that they can get on with their lives also. Madam Chair. I call for a motion, please. I'll move that we table this one more time until next month so that the petitioner can get with engineers, architects, whomever he needs to get a final site plan. He can certainly speak to anyone he needs to about the dimensions or turn radiuses or whatnot. Bring it here, present it within the allotted time of 10 minutes, and then we'll vote on it. That's my motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. And I will say I can take this and try to get some feedback from other departments, but getting it at lunchtime today, there and finding people on our COVID schedule to review it. I mean, I didn't have anybody to show this to you this afternoon, but I can, I can talk to someone in traffic engineering and engineering and um, our development plan um, reviewer and just, and just see what, what they see to give you some more specific feedback, or they may say, hey, we think this will work. I don't know. I don't know. But it would be very helpful, I know, for me and I think other members of the board if we got the plan prior to the day of the meeting. I mean, I personally like to sit and read and look over, sometimes even drive by properties that request changes because I have hard pictures, okay, but sometimes it's just better for me to get out there and walk it. 
So if you can get it a few days ahead of time, if you drive by the property, it's not that far away. I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. You're yes. welcome. Number four, Facebook Properties, 3255 Norman Bridge Road. They can't wait after that one. <laughs> My computer is stuck on this site plan. I just got a screensaver that looks very nice. I'm just calmly looking at it right now. All right, now, so. all right. Thank you. I told mine not to do it until 22.50. All right. I'm sorry that delayed you so long. And your name is? Stephanie Irvine. Okay. And will you tell us what you're going to do? Um, our company has been hired to manage the property. Uh, the owners do live out of state, so we, have, we are here representing the owners. Um, we did not do work to the property. We were just hired a week ago, um, so we're kind of coming into the middle of all this. But they are asking for the paint and the shutters to stay. Comments from the board? I don't have a problem with the paint. I got a real problem with the shutters. Okay. They need to be replaced. Replaced? Replaced. Okay. Remove. Just remove them. Burn them. I don't think shutters are necessary. And I think y'all need to have a discussion about paint given item number one. Well, I do know it's been a long time. Uh, we do have, okay. What's this building? I'm sorry, I got a rolling screen in front of me and I didn't do anything. I mean, this is my, this is my neighborhood. I do know that this building for a long time went it was, I, I don't know if you call it abandoned or whatnot, but it was not occupied. Um, you know, I think Mr. Colvin probably can corroborate that, that this building was in a deep state of disrepair for a number of years, including the brick. Um, you know, this is the kind of thing that really necessitates, uh, I, I don't know if they, even with repairs, if they could have made it look right. I can't remember Again, Mr. Colvin, maybe you can help me. What kind of brick it had it is underneath the paint, but it was, I think it's, there were. I, I think I had a picture. There were some repairs done, as I recall, mm -hmm. and they either, I mean, maybe it was because the property was unoccupied for so long or the repairs were shoddy or both, but it really didn't look good. Yeah, so what happens when Ms. McKenzie paints her house and comes in and says, oops. I'm sorry. What happens with when Ms. McKenzie comes in and says, oh, I painted my house, oops. I like to cross bridges when I get to them. Was this brick unpainted or is it just painted a different color? It was unpainted. And I thought I had a street view, a Google street view of it. Yeah, I found one. You found one. Okay. I believe they painted it because there was a lot of gaps in the brick, and so you would have had mortar going everywhere. Well, if we're going to... I'm not advocating if it's part of I'm just saying I, I think that that's why they did it. If you're going to paint a brick structure, mm -hmm. the reason to paint it is not that there were a lot of gaps and things and we didn't want to see them. You need to fix the problems, which we spent 30 minutes on at the beginning of the meeting. But then if you're going to paint it, then it needs to be painted a brick color, not painted white. So taking off the shutters is the small part. Hasn't this property been here multiple times? No. Prior that they there's one, known? That looks there's like one exactly one looks like, like it. Oh, OK. Then one I'm block away yeah. on yeah. the next corner. Mm -hmm. The exact same. I can see layout. why you think that. Yeah, there, there's a very similar one close by. They so. have, yeah, they, they are similar. As a matter of fact, I drove by that other property the first time when I was looking for this one. 
Uh, but no, they're separate property. <clears throat> Is there anyone from the audience to comment on this project? Mr. Comet, I'm glad to see you. Are your knees chilly today? No, this is wonderful weather. Perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. My name is uh, Charlie Colvin. I'm with the CIA, the Cloverdale Idlewild Association. And as uh, John has already mentioned, the, the property has been a blight on the neighborhood for some time. Um, the folks took it over. They, it, it, it surged and stopped and surged and stopped as far as repairs and fixing up are concerned. But they did have repair work to do, cracks in the, in the, in the uh, bricks. Um, and so when they, when they repair those, the, uh, the masonry, masonry work was, was good. You got everything, all the bricks in line and everything. But painting over that actually improved the look of the building. Um, we, uh, at, we've, we've talked to many in the neighborhood because we knew this was a contestable item. And uh, the, uh, seems to be a matter of opinion, but the majority of the folks are not concerned about the white. Uh, we have a white house, brick painted, not more than a block away from this, and there are a number of painted brick uh, houses and, and uh, multiple uh, dwelling homes in the area. So uh, that isn't an offense to the neighborhood. The white color is probably, uh, we didn't even look to, uh, if it was exactly the color on the palette, but uh, it was close enough that, that we were not concerned. Um, as for the uh, black, most of the people felt the black was a little stark, but again, not concerned about the color black, the contrast. That the, what, what seemed to be the, the guiding factor was that it, the improvement to the plant, the improvement to the facility, seemed to outweigh any concerns that people had as to whether it was historically correct or whether it um, uh, had changed the nature of the building. Most folks felt it had not. As far as the shutters are concerned, we're perfectly comfortable to leave that up to the discretion of the Architecture Review Board. Um, I did talk to the contractor who had done the work, and he said they could replace those with more traditional shutters. They could leave them, they could paint them, they could take them off. Um, so we'll, we'll leave that up to, uh, to you folks. Thank you. Laura Calloway, Garden District Preservation Association. Uh, this is not in our neighborhood, so I don't want to contradict Mr. Colvin's opinion, but because of item number one on the agenda tonight, we would like to see the board take seriously the fact that somebody painted a house without coming to the board first for permission. Any other comments from the audience? Further discussion from the board? Uh, I do think there is a bit of difference. We're talking about a multi, a department complex versus, you know, a Tudor style home. Again, uh, this, uh, this property went unused and abandoned for several years. Again, I, I, I don't remember specifically. I do remember that you know there was brick work done. That, I mean, but any of that. It looks better than it used to. It's not necessarily historic preservation, in my opinion. It's huge, and huge white buildings often look unwieldy. It kind of looks like a beached whale on this site to me. All right, I, I, there's no further discussion. Can we have a motion? Move that we approve the painting of the building. Move that we deny the request to put these particular shutters give the property owner or manager an opportunity to either replace them or remove them. I second it. 
Can we say, they, I think they have to resubmit if they want to replace them. I should have said, if you want to replace them, you need to resubmit to the board so that we can ensure that they're satisfactory with the members. Second. Still second. Did we okay. go second? Yeah, um, Jeremy. Oh, Jeremy did, mm -hmm. yes. All right, all in favor? Opposed? The motion does not pass. Christy, what do we need to do at this point? See if anybody wants to make a different motion. And I remind you, this is not your problem to fix. I mean, that's what we have municipal court for. And if you, you don't have, they don't have to unpaint the brick, but if you want to say you should have asked us first and we might not have approved it, then we can let the municipal court set a fine. I mean, that's, that's where it goes. This is this comes up time and time again, and just like the lady, the, the first uh, case, you know, we can't say, "Hey, it's done. It looks okay." Yeah. Oh well, you know. Then you know what's to say she doesn't do the same thing next month. So I, I, I think you know we gotta sort of take a stance. It's just sort of like the people cutting the trees and going, "Oops." So um, I, I think a little bit of retribution is is in order because we can't really go and look at the building and see if it really determined to need if uh, the paint was required or not. And, and, you know, just because it is a different style doesn't preclude that it should not give, be given the same treatment. And, and I, I really commend the owners for doing the work. That, this has nothing to do with that. We're happy for them to do the work. And, and thankful for there to be, you know, vibrancy in the neighborhood. But to keep vibrancy in the neighborhood, that's why we're here is to kind of protect the neighborhood to maintain the true brick of the buildings or the, the shutters or the, the fireplaces or the chimneys or the driveways. That, that's what we're here to do. And we don't mean to sound horrible because I know it sounds horrible. This has been a horrible day. but. <laughs> And at the end of the day, we're all here for the same reason. We're all here to maintain and protect the integrity of these historic districts. And, and without these rules or, or, you know, guidelines, you don't get that. So I, I think that just needs to be said today. Chrissy, what, what type of fine would they be facing? Jeremy, I, I couldn't understand you. He asked about the fine. Uh -huh. um, that would be up to the judge. It's anywhere from zero to $500. Gonna say it ain't much. Plus court costs, possibly. The, the judges, when, when we have had cases where something was reversible, we mm -hmm. have asked for it to be reversed, which has generally cost more than the $500. Right. Um, but I, personally, in an instance where the, reverse of the, the reversal of the condition would probably cause more damage to the building than mm -hmm. allowing the paint to remain, I would, I would just ask for that. Yeah, I, I would want the brick to be painted a different color, a, a, a brick color. And in cases if that either the owner could agree to do that or if we asked that told the judge that's what we wanted. Sometimes they have waived court costs and fines so the property owner could put that money towards making the alterations that the board requested. Yeah. Well, that, that makes sense. Cause I don't know if it's feasible to try to remove it, you know, just totally. I don't think that's feasible. So I can agree with, you know, paint it a uh, brick color or with finding them. Either one makes sense. It would cost 30 or $40,000 to remove the paint from maybe two sides of this building. Yeah, that's, that's not well, feasible. And it, it would, it would, it would uh, hurt the integrity of the finish of the brick. True. Since it's a just got the one coat, it might come off, and it hadn't been on there long, it might come off fine. That's true. Mm -hmm. But it's but been there for a while. It's now, not so. an inexpensive process, and I think that that's, and we might not be satisfied with the result that we got. Yeah. True. You know, I, I mentioned the Montgomery County Historical it's Society been, was determined. It's been that, 2020 all year long, you know? <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I had a motion. I got shot down. Somebody else want to take a shot at it? I mean, let, let, let me throw this out there because she's she's representing the property owner, but she's not the owner, so she probably 
she may not have the authority to agree to anything, any condition you might have. So you could make a motion that is two pronged of, you know, either, you know, you deny it in its current state, what would bring it into compliance? Well, possibly painting it red or, you know, brick tone, color to be approved, removing the shutters. And if that's a, if that's a non-starter for the owner, then, then we file the, the violation in court. Or we file the violation in court just to make a statement that y'all really need to come talk to us first. So it, it depends on, on what you see as the, the best possible outcome of this because they could paint it a brick color, but since it's already painted, it can be painted any other color after that that's on the palette. So not that that's an easy undertaking, but kind of wheels within wheels. Okay, can I try this one? <laughs> All right, I call for a motion to deny the paint as well as a motion to deny the um, shutters given that the shutters can be removed or replaced. I, I just want to be clear. So if we deny the paint, then re are we, you know, from there, I guess, imposing I would, a I would, fine? I would, file, I would file in municipal court. She'd file in court. File in municipal court. And we can just <coughs> request a straight fine or we can ask for something else. But um, do I need to state that in the motion, Christy? No. Okay. We, we can discuss that <clears throat> with the judge. Because I have not been in municipal court for so long. I haven't been before. The judge that usually did environmental cases retired, so I, I have no idea how this will go. Let's see how it will go. But I've got a Second. couple of others to file too, so we may get a good, good get some good practice. Yeah. I second it. Let's see how it go. All right. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry that your first trip here wasn't all that pleasant. That's okay. I hope you can come back and have fun sometime. <laughs> all right. We've got uh, Kayla Jordan. Uh, she asked for an additional 60 days or an extra, sorry, 30 days that was offered to her last month. So yeah. she's right. not here. Okay. All right. Didn't want to hear. Never mind. And. Uh, Victor Hunt, Old Cloverdale, 2011 LeBron. Oh, thank goodness, an easy one. Thank you, Victor. <laughs> what is this? Victor, seldom does anyone come with a proposal to, do, to improve a property any more than you are planning to improve this one. I was delighted to see it. Tell us what you're going to do. Well, thanks. Uh, and I'll say this house has come a long way. We bought this house eight years ago. It was, uh, it was one of the scandals of the neighborhood, uh, the condition <laughs> that it was in. And so uh, we've really enjoyed being there. But this, uh, this house uh, just has this large concrete pad out in the front that somebody in years past did and uh, it's one of those typical things you say if I was doing this new would I do it this way and the answer is certainly no we would not do it that way um, not to say that there aren't some good solutions to parking in front of houses uh, but this one is pretty poor uh, we also uh, uh, have experience of the pea gravel driveway next door uh, that's been good. Our neighbors had a great experience with that. He is, uh, has really enjoyed having it. And so uh, uh, we want to do that. So we just want to take all the concrete out and take a stone edging to put along uh, the edge of the drive area, leaving the concrete curb cut. The curb cut at the street is for the two driveways that are side by side. And obviously, we don't want to take that out. So the 
the concrete at the curb cut will stay in place between the asphalt and the pea gravel. So we'll put the stone edging along there and we'll have uh, a stone, uh, stone gravel uh, path up to our front brick steps that we have and uh, put down some more of the lush Meyer zoysia sod that we have in our front yard. That is some really fine grass, I'm telling you, here in Alabama. So that's, that's our plan. All right. Is there anyone from the audience to speak to this project? Um, I did get comments from Cloverdale in writing. Um, for this one, OCA has never had an issue with removing large amounts of concrete and replacing it with grass. <laughs> We are also fine with the gravel drive. And I would say that um, had he just wanted to remove the, the parking pad and sod it, he would not have come. We would have just, because that's a good reversal. Um, it was the material change for the driveway okay. that, that prompted the review. Is there any discussion from the board? May I have a motion? Move to approve as submitted. Second. All in favor? Bam. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Come with a good plan. Hey, it's a great it. house. I've always liked that house. <laughs> All right, our next one is Jake Johnson, Cottage Hill, Henrik Street. That was withdrawn. Yep. And I believe, are we still switching nine, eight, and nine? Are you all okay with going last? Okay, we're going to do number nine. Okay, next. Amy Herring and Winston Level, Old Cloverdale, 1348 Magnolia Curve. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Thank y'all for taking time to listen to our plans. I have to admit, I've lived in this house now for 22 years, and I have thoroughly enjoyed it. But COVID has taught me I need more room. <laughs> <laughs> I need space, I need breathing area, I need some private time, as does he. So what, um, we have two sets of plans here. Our main plan is to increase the size of our kitchen by six feet and our sunroom. I think you have pictures that illustrate what we want to do. The um, other project, which is in the front yard, our walkway is just concrete and crumbling. So what we would like to do is reinforce it. And we'd also like to put some railings on our front steps. You know, we're getting older, all of our friends are getting older, and we view that as a safety precaution. So that's my story. I'm happy to answer any questions. Wendy's kind of an expert. He can answer the <laughs> how long are things and that kind of stuff. I've always admired this house. You keep your yard so well. Thank you. We try. Are there any comments from the audience? Um, OCA's comment was the owners presented their proposal to the September OCA meeting. The additions are not visible from the street and the materials used will match those currently on the house. OCA has no objection to the addition or the new walkway. All right. Comments from the board. We got one from the audience. I think, Madam Chair. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. I missed you. And as far as I know, there's none of the neighbors, they've all been informed and no one's objecting. All right. Thank you. Any comments from the board? Then may I have a motion, please? Move to approve as submitted. All second. in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. All in favor? <laughs> Need a second, Madam Chair. She did you right. get a second on that? Yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> All so, right. Sometimes I talk so loud I can't hear myself. 
All right. Thank you very much. That's fine. We appreciate it. Thank you. We look forward to these next folks. The house is beautiful, by the way. I, I had the privilege of living in one of the, uh, my family lived in one of the houses that they had for about 30 years. So. <coughs> Hello, we printed out a poster so you don't have to look back if you can see it okay. But for the... And yeah, so we're at 1616 South Perry Street. Um, it may say it on there, but the property was rezoned to B1BQ last year. And so it will be an event venue and a um, arts education facility. And so we're, <laughs> so long list of proposals, but kind of the, I think the main one for discussion is the adding a driveway entrance on the South Perry side. And that's primarily to help um, kind of the flow of any kind of traffic onto the property. Step in front of it or. <laughs> Do you, Christina, I can hold it and you can talk. I'll, I'll van away. Thank you. <laughs> So you can see that on the very bottom is South Perry, and then I believe, <laughs> yep, um, that side is Howard Street. So currently we already have the circle driveway in the back, as you can see from the pictures, um, and then we are proposing the new, the new driveway will come off South Perry. We're pretty much the only one on our block that does not have a front driveway access into our property. So then we will have it fully screened so that you won't see any of it. And then on the, if we'll go down and make sure. And it'll match the driveway we have on the other side. So it is a 12 foot driveway. Those are photos of the house. I believe the first photo was taken, the house was finished in 1915. And that photo was probably taken in 1916, 1917. And then I do know the one on the bottom was taken in 1918. So we're not making any changes to the house itself, just to a little bit of the landscaping. Um, I think the most controversial one would probably be the new parking area. Um, and then we are doing four by four concrete with, we're taking up the grass that's already there. We're having a company come and professionally take the grass up. And then we are using that to go in and do the Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll give you five bucks if you can make that stand up. Say it again? I, I was telling Christy, I'll give you five bucks if you can make that. <laughs> Three trees. Yeah, that's probably Let's enough. Let's it up. <laughs> so you're going to repurpose the grass? We are. So yeah, we're going to be sod. taking the sod up and then cutting it so that it'll be filled in between. Mm -hmm. And then the rest we are um, just going to, the grass company that's doing it is probably going to sell those sections off because our grass is phenomenal. Um, I've just never seen grass repurposed before, to be honest with you. I like hey, you got to use as much as you can. Why would I buy new grass? No reason uh, to buy new if you don't need to. And then let's see what else. Um, so then the, dry, the new driver will go in between those. They will be fully screened. Um, we are doing a three foot uh, front wrought iron fence. Um, sorry, it's a lot. I don't know. And then that'll just, we're keeping with the, I mean, we're trying to do it as historically accurate as possible by adding in a new front that would have looked as if it was there from the beginning. We have all of our wrought iron um, on the back section of the house, as you can see in, in the original historical photo that I showed, did not have that back fencing that's on the back porch right now. So we're repurposing that by removing it and having um, John Phillips, the local, iron worker, he's going to make that into the front fence is what you see right there. So we're taking that off, repurposing it, and then doing as much as we can to match that fence to the rest of it. Um, and then doing a brick column, kind of, kind of like how, well, a lot smaller than Trinity, but uh, kind of how they did around there. So it's arching, and then we're going to do gas lanterns, and then do an arch over here. John's going to make it, and it'll, we're going to copy the look of the front of the house, you can see it has the arched windows and the arched door and 
continue that look at the front of the property. Um, what else? And, this, and then the small kind of hedge rose garden section in the yeah, north, that's so good. northeast section, just because the pavers will be used. And then we have right now, I think in the 80s, the gentleman who owned the house in the 80s had taken a lot of the brick pavers off of the, the sidewalk when they redid it. And mm -hmm. he had made a pathway kind of that we've discovered from clearing the property. And so we're going to reuse those brick pavers in our rose garden in the middle of it. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Questions? Any questions? Tell <laughs> Rodri. Thank you. It's going to look pretty, I promise. And it'll look gorgeous. Laura, do you have any comments? The association does not object to the plan. Thank you. I would note that the parking area is adjacent to a property that they also own. So it, it okay. does not abut um, a non-involved mm. neighbor. So the neighbors are not going to be complaining about parking. <laughs> well, we if, they, if, we they do, the <laughs> if they do, it's because one of them's in one house and yeah, one of them's been thrown to the dog the house and the other <laughs> house. So. Well, they, they, can, they can take care of that. If we, it, we, don't can, we don't get into <laughs> marital problems here. <laughs> What's the intended use for the building again? Uh, it's a wedding venue and creative arts education facility. So we'll have art workshops and um, basically we need, uh, we do not want to park on the South Ferry. We are going to have signs. There is no parking on there. That's really the, the reason that we need such a large, so that we can make sure that all of our parking is off the street and on our property itself. And with that, that means that that section we're proposing won't be used for parking the vast majority of the time. Yeah. It would be only for the large scale events that I think are 36. 36 per year. So on Saturday. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to look like just a beautiful kind of French inspired garden. All right. Let's move right on. May I have a motion? Move to approve as submitted. Second. All in favor? All Thank right. You. Thank you, guys. You're so good. You're so, it was a relief. Hope you enjoyed the show. <laughs> I know, I was getting a little nervous. Y'all were like saying no to everyone else. I was like, no. And, and, and they, they've had um, a few bumps in the road. Yeah. So. We, we do yeah. actually work well with others. <laughs> I, I just hadn't got to do my job in a few years, and it's gotten me itchy. It's, it's the benefit of having a well developed plan, mm -hmm. makes it yes. a lot easier for y'all to do Like the you. one That's you it. have. That's, I like that. That's nice. <laughs> Tell me something like that and I can work with it. Um, approval of the minutes, yeah, please. We, okay. Yes. Yes. Um, the minutes were sent out and I read them and didn't see anything uh, wrong. May we, uh, does anybody else have any additions or corrections to the minutes? Then they stand approved as submitted. <laughs>